Welcome back to the study. I hope you've been with us the last few videos as we went through Mark chapter 2. And today we're going to summarize what Mark chapter 2 is kind of about. Uh, you remember we started out and we saw how Jesus is putting things into a new perspective. He tells us that we must put new wine into new wineskins. In other words, we can't take the newness of our life in Christ and make it fit our old lifestyle. We can't force things that we want to happen in more of a Christian way. And I think that's the way a lot of us North Americans do. We try to take our lifestyle and make it mold and shape to Christianity or to the morals and teachings of Christ and to the redemptive power of Christ's Holy Spirit living in us on a day-to-day -day basis. And it really is the opposite. Uh, there's new, fresh life being brought into us. Paul says in Corinthians, he says, the old things are passed away and things have become new. It's not an act of remodeling the old house. It's getting a new home. And that's the way we have to see this passage of Scripture. Jesus goes on to give us examples of this very same thing. He just takes one as an example of the Sabbath. And he says, you know, you've been taught it a certain way. And, and I mean, these are all part of the peripheral understandings of what happened here in Mark chapter 2. We have an image of what we think is right and what we think is wrong. And sometimes how we should act and how we should not act. What we should say and what we should not say. And Jesus is very simply saying, no, it's all new. And put new wine into new wineskins. It's a process of transition, this Christian walk is. And when we start into knowing and recognizing Christ for who he is, we don't ask the questions. We recognize him for who he is and we see him and we allow him to change us. And he will give us the new wine as we are the new wine skins. And he will not put his life into our old lifestyle. He will not. And we have to be willing to accept that. I think that's the most difficult thing because we have these sensual preferences. And when I say sensual, I'm not talking necessarily about sexuality. Sensual simply means the five sensory perceptions of uh, see, feel, touch, taste, hear. These type of things. We live by them because they are so common to us as human beings. And in fact, we are really spiritual beings encased in humanity because this flesh is going to die someday and I will continue to live. Where I will continue to live is the issue whether I live in the presence of God or in the total absence of God. And that defines heaven and hell, basically, in its very essence. What we have to realize is we are made new when we become into Christ. We are reborn into a new life. We don't bring the old in with us, nor can we take the new back into the old grid. And that is what is so easy for us to do because of the fact that we live in these human life bodies that we have sensory perception with. Now, that doesn't make the things that we see, feel, touch, and taste, and hear wrong at all. It really doesn't. They can be. The enemy obviously takes things and makes uh, them temptations to us that will harm us and hurt us. But we live a new lifestyle. We live a new way. We live governed by a new authority in our life. See, in our old life, we are governed by ourselves. And the Bible says very clearly in the Old Testament, every man's right in his own eyes. In other words, he thinks he knows how to run his own life. But when we come into Christ, we are made new. And his new life, that fresh wine, comes into our new wineskins, that reality of new life that we find born in him. And he changes things. And he used this Sabbath. There at the end of our text is kind of an example. He thought you knew what that was. He says, no, 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 no. It's different now. You were made for the Sabbath, not the Sabbath made for you. And, and, and it's not just an issue of the Sabbath. And there are some denominations in Christianity who fight over what the Sabbath is, when it is, how it's practiced, when it shouldn't be practiced, what matters, what doesn't matter. And Jesus says, hold on just a second here. Just chill out. It's a principle of new life in Christ. 
I'm going to put new wine in your new wine skin because you are a new wine skin. When you were born into Christ, when you were baptized into him, Paul says, we are all one in him. In other words, there is this issue of newness of life and family together in Christ. That's the beauty of the whole thing. So, as we look at Mark chapter 2, we realize he's giving us examples of how to live new. How to be a new creature in Christ. How to understand the principle of not taking the new wine of the Holy Spirit and the life of Christ in us and trying to make it fit in what we used to do. It won't. And he says, even in our concepts of what we thought was right, now it's different. Some people would say, well, that sounds like Jesus is changing moral codes on us. Sounds like Jesus is saying now what the Old Testament was all about, isn't, it doesn't count anymore. No, it does. It's who lives it out in you now. You tried before, he will now. And that is the assurance we can have and the truth that we obtain from Mark chapter 2.